everybody, it's Heidi. I'm back for an extension of watercolor. This is a part two series of exploring and creating uh, watercolors with Heidi. And I'm really excited to be here at the beautiful Braintree Community Arts Center. I hope you come on down and take some classes and everything because this is a fun place. We have some fun classes being offered. Um, what I'm going to do for this portion I'm going to start by kind of reviewing who I am, what I, my philosophy, my thinking, and about where I want this to go for you. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is give a quick demonstration, some ideas, some thoughts, and then all of those I'm going to end up with a final piece that I'm going to try to transition and finish in, amount, in a certain amount of time so I can show you how I love using the materials. Um, and today, as I said, it's watercolors. Um, watercolors scare people um, because they think that they're too loose and they can't control them. I'm going to show you the opposite. Um, I also want you to use watercolors to explore. All right. So exploring means that you just try it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You don't have to show anybody. You have a lot of fun with it. Um, I love teaching. I love encouraging. I love saying, oh, that's awesome. And I think you'll do the same thing. You'll look at this piece and, oops, we're falling apart over here. But that's okay because they're excited as well. But the thing is, is that I want you to just try different things. All right. So real quick review, watercolor. Watercolor is a type of painting technique that you use water. And there are many ways, and you start sometimes with a very dry um, toolkit. So these are your basic, you can go anywhere and you can get these. There's the basic colors, they're not very expensive, they're easy, they're fun to use, and I even use these. But this is one thing, way that you can start. You can get some really expensive travel kits that are, I take with me when I go on vacation and I travel with my watercolor sets so it comes with everything. You can also buy tubes of watercolor. You can buy expensive tubes of watercolor. You can buy inexpensive student sets. You can buy starter sets. You can buy individual tubes. You can do all kinds of things with watercolor. So today, what I'm going to do is just kind of, I'm, mo I'm mostly going to focus on the tubes. The reason why I'm going to focus on the tubes is because you start wet and I can show you different ways that you can use the tubes of watercolor. I can control how thick I want it to be. I can control how much water I want to add. There are so many things that I can do with the tubes. I love blending, mixing colors, having a blast. And so that's what I'm going to kind of show you. You also have brushes. There are many different types of brushes. We went over this in the last section, but I brought some of my favorites. This is my absolute favorite brush that goes to a beautiful point. It's a sable, it's called a silver black velvet brush and it soaks up and it also absorbs and it holds water really well. And my other favorite is this little teeny tiny triple aught brush. What that means is I think there's one hair on here, one, one piece. And this is the, where I get all my little details. So think about this. Some people say that watercolor they don't have control because maybe they're using a brush like this. You might want to find a mid-size brush and a mid-size brush on this one it might be a three or a four and if you don't know or don't understand this take a walk go into an art supply store look at all the brushes. For watercolor go to the watercolor section. Take a look at all the different, different brushes. This one is a chiseled brush. It has a point on it. And I can get some really cool lines and some definition and some really fun things. I don't have anything specific for it, but I might pick it up and I might want to do, just for example, I might want to put shingles on a house. I might use a brush like this. Okay, so those are my brushes that I like to have on hand. I also like to use a 2H pencil. Why a 2H pencil? Well, a 2H pencil is very, very light and I can erase away my lines. And that's a really good thing. Sometimes I might want to have a margin or I might want to indicate where my horizon line is or I might want to indicate. So a 2H pencil and then an, a, an eraser because an eraser can erase those things away. Um, I have different types of palettes. What is a palette? Well, a palette is where you put your paint and you do your mixing. 
So with my palette, I have this beautiful, it's a ceramic, doesn't it sound cool? Um, this is a ceramic piece that I use and I put my watercolor into the little containers and I do my mixing and blending on the other side. So this is really fun. You can put it, it almost looks like, um, you know, like if I were to do some sumi painting with the, oh, with the charcoal or something. I also have this set that has its own palette on the side. Notice I keep the colors because I can use them again. So I have my watercolors on the palette. If I was really and I wanted to clean it up, I could. So maybe this wouldn't be my colors. The other type of palettes that we have, this is a paper palette normally used with say acrylics or oils, but you can use them with watercolors and it doesn't, um, I can't mix like a, it might run off the paper but I, it's a waxy surface and I put the watercolor down and I can mix and blend right on top of this. This is really good. It's not very expensive but the least expensive, most fun way to do it, get a piece of cardboard. So this is a piece of white, I don't know, it's a, I don't know, it's probably when I was um, matting a piece of mat board or something and I covered it with contact paper so now it's waterproof. When I travel, I bring this little palette with me. The reason why it's dirty right now, I could probably scrape it off, but there's, um, I used acrylic paint and it kind of stained it and stayed with it, but it's not going to affect when I'm painting on my um, surface. I forgot about my real fun brush. This is a sponge. It's a painter's sponge. It soaks up, it dabs. You can do some really awesome things with a sponge. They do sell art supply stores, they sell little bags of sponges, which is good. I can cut this if I want to get a specific at, um, angle or point or something, but also you can use the sponge in your kitchen, <laughs> and I've done that multiple times, and you make it a little point, and you can point down, you make snow in the mountains, or you can do whatever, so it's, you don't have to go buy all expensive stuff. Do what you have, do what you have around, right? Or use what you have around. So the first part of this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to de demonstrate some blending. I want to show you how you can mix your colors and make a, a color tester or color palette just to see what your colors do. It doesn't have to be a final product. I love, I love to just explore. I think I mentioned in the other um, show, but I mentioned um, one of my professors from Mass College of Art, his name is Dean Nimmer. Dean, I hope you're watching. Um, I loved his, I don't remember what I produced in that class, but I remember exploring the watercolors. He was, he would just, we would daub on the paper and just let it flow, let it explode, let it happen. How cool is that, right? So that's what we're gonna try to do a little bit. Um, all right, so on the board here, I just have a bunch of demo pieces. These are not finished products. These are pieces that I created by exploring the different watercolors techniques. And so if you direct your eyes kind of up to this little section, these are scrap pieces of paper left over that I just explored with one stroke of the brush and then I added color. This one is like a mini masterpiece. It is really teeny tiny with seagrass and maybe you'll be able to see them, maybe not, but let's see. And then this one is a color sampler. I looked around the room and I blend the colors and those were the colors that, that I was seeing. These are blues, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just set up a real simple demo and I'm going to take it and I'm just gonna do a sampler. Whatever shape you want to use for your sampler is up to you. Some people like squares, some people like circles, some people like to just put dab the colors. So I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper, nothing fancy, and I'm going to use this and I'm just going to put it on here so that you can see that. So if I want to use my pencil and create a, a um, like a grid, you know, if I wanted to do one by one inch squares, I wanted to do something, I could do that. But I'm, I'm really just, my focus right now is just trying to see what my colors do. So my colors that I chose are the primary colors when we talk about colors. So I'm going to, and I chose two uh, hues, two different values of those colors. 
So what I have, so if you can see it, I have a permanent rose, and I'm just going to put a small amount. I'm not going to use a lot. And I don't even like that color, putting it on the thing there. It looks very muddy to me. So I have a um, permanent rose, and then I have alizarin crimson. So my alizarin crimson, both are in, say, the red range, and I'm going to be using those separately. For my yellows, I have a cadmium yellow, pale hue. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on there. And again, these are watercolors. You don't need a lot. It's very concentrated. And then I'm going to take a yellow ochre. So the yellow ochre is kind of a um, brown, dusty brown kind of color when you look at it, but it's a great color for mixing and blending. I have two blues. I have a cerulean blue and I have an ultramarine blue. So here's my cerulean blue. Um, some of your tubes, if you haven't used them in a while, they may um, throw out some oil with them, but that's fine. You can, don't have to use that. You can clean that up. And then I have, this one is an ultramarine blue. Really bright, bright vibrant. Over on the sides, I'm going to put a Payne's gray and an ivory black. All right, so we have a Payne's gray and an ivory black. In my paintings, I don't use black. I use Payne's Gray. Um, why? Um, it's not as harsh. Um, do I ever use black? Sometimes I do if I need to bring something out or if I'm doing something a little bit more commercial. But we take to look at that. So right now, if I tip it, the oil's going to bunch here. But I've got my colors that are on my palette. I'm going to take these and move these over here so they're not in the way. And I love using the watercolor sets, but I think I demonstrated with that the last time. So I'm just going to go to this palette that's here. So what we need is water, obviously. And I'm going to choose a brush that I can have a little bit of control with. So I'm going to choose one of those angled brushes that I was talking about. So what I can do is start pure. You like that, right? You're just going to use that straight color. So I'm going to try, start with the rose. And I mix the rose right on the palette so it's almost like the consist consistency of a light cream. So it's thick, but it's not too thick. And I'm going to take that, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a square right here like that. So, seems simple, seems easy, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding more water as I move down. So I'm going to take that same, dip it in. This time I'm going to have more water, and I'm just going to go underneath it. So I'm really thinning out that color, and then I'm going to add more water. I haven't cleaned my brush. I haven't really done much of anything to this. And I'm working my way down to get like a gradation of the colors as I'm working down. So that was my rose that I was working with. Permanent rose. So now, here comes my alizarin crimson. I'm going to take this alizarin crimson, same thing, mix it to the consistency of a light cream. Oh, I'm loving it. Love alizarin crimson. So I'm going to take this, same thing. Start with as pure as I possibly can. And then I start adding water to thin it out. I'm not wasting any paint, not on my palette. It's nice. And slowly, you're getting control a little bit, you know, by controlling what you're doing with that watercolor. So I'm going to move on to the yellow. So I have my light yellow. 
I like to clean out my brushes. I know there are some artists that have like um, three things of water, one for their warm colors, one for the cool colors. I don't do that. Do get clean water though when you have the opportunity. All right, so I've got the consistency of cadmium yellow. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, get lighter and lighter. I think you're getting the point here. And I'm going to go into this. And I'm now going to use the yellow ochre. Again, the consistency of light cream. I'm just going to go across the board so you can see how I'm doing this. Mix that up. I could do this all day. but I know you don't want to watch me do it all day. So I'm going to go now with my cerulean blue. Oh, this is such a beautiful color. There's my cerulean blue. Again, I would do the same thing and transition down. And finally, my ultramarine blue. And why would I do this? Because I want to know what my watercolors are like. What I have in front of me and what I'm using is not a very expensive set. And I can tell just, just, just from using this that there's a lot of gel or a little bit of, um, um, what do you call what's it? Yeah, jello, gel. There's some gel in there, and it's, it's, it's not as pure. It's not as much pigment. Remember we talked about colored pencils that have a lot of pigment, less wax. So the same thing that we're talking about here. All right. Let's pretend I did that whole range down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of these colors as I start to transition. So maybe I'm going to choose, audience out there, tell me two of those you want me to mix. I'm going to mix. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to mix my um, alizarin crimson with that cadmium yellow. All right, so I do it on my palette. Start with your lighter color first. So I'm picking up some of that cadmium yellow. And I'm going to start in a different spot on my palette. And my brush was not clean. Rule number one, clean out your brush. What's nice about a paper towel? Clean that baby up. Grab another one. And I've got my brush that I can go in there. Let's. Grab this one, my alizarin crimson, and a little bit of that. Oh, this is a beautiful mix. So I'm mixing right on the palette. I'm not, I'm pulling from my pure colors. So I know for a fact that I've got, isn't that beautiful? Nice orange. I would do the same thing. I would add more water and add more water and add more water. The same, now if I take that, notice I'm staying away from the, let's do the rose with the, let's do rose with say, let's pick up a little bit of rose. And I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, cerulean. And the kids at school will all be like, yay, it's purple. So I'm going to be mixing an absolutely gorgeous purple, All right? So the same thing. I'm, I, I've got three colors, basically, and I'm taking those three colors and mixing and blending. If I want them to really be exciting, do the opposites on the color spectrum. So when we take a cadmium yellow, mix it with a blue, you're going to get green, and then I'm going to mix that with a little bit of that rose to get a brown. So if you think about it, it's like the color of the dirty water that you're working with sometimes. So here I go. I need a little bit more of this yellow. So if I take, as I said before, I'm going to take a tiny bit of this yellow. And I'm going to take, add a little bit to create green. Here's my green. All right, so now I'm going to take that, move over on my palette, grab a little bit of, let's try the rose, see what happens. Mix that with the, oh, this is awesome. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to take that, I'm going to create 
a brown, right? How cool. You know, I'm mixing the colors. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to remembering as I go along. Oh, I love this. So I'm going to take that brown. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with water. And this is a great example because what we're going to be doing for my demo is we're going to be painting rocks. Pretty cool, huh? What color are rocks? Can you say what color a rock is? They're not just brown. They've got a little green in them. They've got a little orange in them. They've got a... So I need to play with this color to come up with different variations. So I'm going to take that brown, mix a little bit of yellow. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to maybe take that yellow with the brown and mix a little more blue and make it a little bit darker. If you think about, go to the jetty in your mind right now. Go to the jetties on the beach. What color are those jetties? What color? Right? Everybody says black. They're not black. Look at them. What, they, what are they made up of? What types of... Look at that's a cool brown now. All right? So I'm doing that with these colors. I, don't, I didn't mix brown. I didn't squirt brown out of my tube. I could if I wanted to, but it's more fun if you create it your own way. All right, so that's one of the things that we're doing here. So if you take a look at some of the pieces that I did as demos, a lot of these that are here were exactly that. I was exploring color and seeing what my brush would do with the water and what the paint would do with the water. So, you know, like the Birch series, the detailed paintings, the ones that are exploring, the, another exploring. Just keep trying a lot of the different things out when you're working. So here I'm going to go and I'm going to take my water, take a, a blotter brush, something that will, and I'm going to just paint like a circle. And because this is on a table, I'm painting a water point that's here. Because this is on the table, the water's seeping down, but I'm going to take that brown that I made, or one of the browns, and I'm just going to kind of let that happen. And notice it's piling up down at the bottom there. Take your brush, get all the excess water out, and just vacuum that baby up. How cool is that? And all I'm going to do is let the paint work with this. So if, again, if I pick this up, and I've got my colors that I'm mixing and blending, the complements, the opposites. I'm trying to get some different types of colors. And just let it happen. If you need more water, you can put more water in there. <laughs> this is fun. So if you take these, oh, it's just kind of a fun thing, and let it dry. Then I can go back into it and add some more details. What I did with some of these other pieces that I have up on the board, I did the exact same thing except for with just blue. So what I did with the blue is just trying to create flower petals, simple flower petals just by taking the color, playing with a brush, making it work, having some fun with it. All right, so there's a few things that I just, uh, this is what, pretty much what that is. And it just taking it and pressing it. All right, so that's pretty much fun. The other thing, um, when you do some of these samples, how cool is it to take it and then turn this into a gift? or a present, or a little mini watercolor. So I have this thing where I have to have frames for everything. I have a collection of frames <laughs> because it, all different sizes, right? So if I take the, one of these inexpensive little frames and I kind of place it over this, I might find something really neat that maybe I can, it's a waterfall, 
It's, it's beautiful right now. So I'm finding something that maybe I can go into this and create a little mini painting like I've done over here. And they're wonderful little gifts to give away or to, to give to somebody with some, I can work right on top of it now with my watercolors, make it, make it, oh, this is so pretty. Nobody's getting this one. But anyway, so wait, that's one of the things that you can do with all these extra samples that I have. If I take this one, I've got waves that are just crashing on the shoreline. How much fun is that? Or say I take and do a little gift card. How cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great thing. Ooh, <laughs> look at that one. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, I find masterpieces and everything. I get all excited. I know. So again, part of what I was just trying to show you is that all of your little samples, all your little doodads, they can actually become something. I've actually framed some. You can see them there here. I've done some of the, the framed pieces. So what would I do? Here's this. It's finished. It's right on this piece. I'm going to work right on top of this. So I'm going to get, because I want control, right? We're going to talk about control right now. I'm going to use my tiny, tiny, tiny little brush. And on this one, I'm just going to add some seagulls into this. So I don't know. But if I just, whoops, there we go. So if I just take this and I just draw the V, that we've all learned are upside down W with a line. I've got some birds that are kind of circling overhead of my um, tide wash or anything that I have there. It's kind of fun. So a detail brush is when you go back into it after it's dried and you've added a bunch of your little details to your piece. So that's what that could be. You could have a lot of fun with that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do a piece. I'm going to be quiet. No, not really. But I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing, my process, and why. Do you have to do this? No. But it might be a really fun thing for you to try because guess what? Rocks are everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to take some actual rocks and I'm going to recreate them in watercolor. Okay? All right. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is focusing on rocks. For people that know me, I have this thing with rocks. I have these rock creations that I call found fish, and I've been collecting rocks forever. And when I'm walking the beach, I create fish from the rocks. Sounds interesting, but basically. So what I, I have this collection of rocks. I love walking the beach, and this is when I was talking about how, what color is a rock? You know, like what is this color and formation? I love to, to watercolor rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these simple shapes and recreate them onto my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my simplest one for, and let's just draw this long oval piece. And then I know that there's a white one up in the upper right hand corner. They overlap, and they intersect, and they touch each other. And I can expand and make some rocks bigger or smaller, a little more interesting if I want to. So it's a great way to go about doing this. So I've created my composition. Do I want to add some more rocks? Possibly I could. So the goal of this is to have it look like it's a group of rocks that's on this piece of paper. White is very interesting because I have it on the dark brown background so I may add that afterwards to make it stand up. So now that I have my composition what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pencil in a frame so that I have an idea of where I want to go with this. I can erase these pencil lines afterwards I don't have to worry too much about it. So I'm going to start with the one that I want to add the most detail to afterwards, and it's this little guy over here on the corner. 
And if you look at the colors and remember my color palette, my sampler that I did, that I spent so much time on, I'm going to add water. And I like to use the edge of my paper just to have it, you know, the top of it maybe, just to use it as a sampler or have a sample piece on the side. I'm going to take and I'm going to fill this in with water, just to this rock with some water. And as I'm working, I'll be jumping around a little bit. I'm going to try to match that color as much as I possibly can. So I'm going back to the palette where I created those really cool grays and browns. And I'm just going to get the base color. I need a little more red. And I'm going to get that base kind of a peachy color. Look at, I hardly have any watercolor in here. Isn't it? Ooh, it's just so much fun. So I've got this one, all right? So I have that one. So now I'm going to jump over to the other side. I have one that has a lot of orange in it. It's a white creamy. I can't make white really, so that means I need to also be a little bit more transparent. So I'm going to go back to my yellow orca, grab a little bit of orange, a lot of water. So this is where that sample piece of paper, I mean, um, up on the corner, maybe I'm just doing a tester with a color. Do I need to have less water, more water? And I'm going to go in this. I didn't put the water down this time because I want it to be a, it's a solid color. And I'm filling in just right up to the, to the pencil. So let's just per se, let's say that I put too much, you know, water on there. I showed you before, if I take my brush, squeeze out that excess water, I can actually vacuum up that excess so I don't have the pools of water and it will dry a little bit faster. Because if you th remember, watercolor takes a while and when you're mixing, look at the two differences between the two. I think that that's wonderful. So here comes the part that everybody starts to freak out about. Oh no, I gotta make gray. Well, here we go. I see in this big piece on the top here, it's almost like it's um, a light blue with a touch, touch, touch. It's a cool. So it's, it's like a light cool, cool color. So I'm gonna use a little bit of orange and blue. So I'm gonna, with this one, I'm gonna take I'm going to mix some of the ultramarine, grab a little bit of orange. Look, I just made the color already. But <laughs> it's like a discovery, you know, it's like so cool. I'm not going to add the water down. I'm just going to go into this and go right up to the edge. So what would happen if I put the two wet colors right next to each other? It, they're going to run into each other. Is that a mistake? Might be intentional. Who knows? But if you don't want that to happen, that's when you reach out and you take your um, your paintbrush, your favorite paintbrush, and you take it and you dip it out. So the one that's underneath is a little bit darker, right? And it's a little bit more, I would say, brown. So that means I need more orange and I need to have a stronger color. So I'm going to pull up some orange. There it is. How come it happens? This is awesome. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to paint in the darker rock that's underneath. You can turn your paper so that you can get it. And I'm going to put it back because I like the composition that I'm dealing with. Painting right up to that edge. Notice how I'm controlling my brush and filling in. And don't worry about it being even or anything. I just kind of go into this. Let it flow and let it work. So I have rock and I have this really cool line. So maybe I just might kind of work with that a little bit and play. All right, so I have the white one left and I have this really cool soft, it has a little green in that one and a brown stripe. So I'm gonna clear this off, my brush, and I'm gonna put that stripe in first.
I'm saving the hard one for last. I'm saving gray for the white one. So I'm gonna let that sit for a couple seconds and I'm gonna to try to create that greenish one with a little bit. So I already know I have a gray. Pull up some green. Again, the gray that I created was with complementary colors, orange and um, blue. And you're gonna get different variations, obviously, if I use different types of blue. And again, Ah, it ran into it, but that's okay. I kind of like that because it'll make it work. Now comes the hard one. I'm gonna try to get into the white here. So what do I see in that white? I see a little bit of blue, and I do see a little bit of orange, but it, what, it's, gonna get, it's gonna pull out more when I add my brown to the background. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably have a little bit of the light yellow to try to get that and work with some of that gray and add a little touch of orange to kind of bring that. I can see it right over here. So I'm gonna put, I don't, it's a little too bright for me right now, but it's all right. We can, I'm gonna add some blue. So what is yellow and blue makes kind of a green. So when I look at this, I see some darker oranges, I see some vivid grays, and it almost it looks like blue cheese. I don't know if that's a good description, but it has some really cool texture to it. Can a paintbrush do that? Absolutely a paintbrush can do that. Do I have the perfect paintbrush for it? Eh, maybe, maybe not. So what I'm gonna do is a couple of things. I'm gonna mix a darker gray. So again, I'm going back with the blue, some of the orange, And what I'm gonna do is try to copy what some of those, and I'm twisting my brush. So what I'm doing is I'm pick, 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 you know, making, I don't want it to be, I don't wanna draw the exact shapes. I'm just moving them around on top. And if one is too dark or one is too bright, I can go into it and I can change it. So I've got that. I'm gonna grab the chisel brush that I had earlier, grab this, and I'm just gonna kinda put a little bit of color on it, kinda work it on top. I'm not, I'm not scrubbing, I'm just doing a nice, kinda like where the spots of color are appearing. Oh. I'm having so much fun. I hope you're at home and having a good time watching this, because I am. Look at that. Oh, I'm at the beach right now. So I've created part of that. Now, here's my itty bitty bitty control brush. I'm gonna go into it, get some more of that concentrated now. I'm gonna go into it and I'm gonna go over some of those spots and really make darken it up a little bit so I can bring out contrast and bring out some of those spots because it's not perfect. And I'm working fast because that's how I work, but some of you might you know, spend more time focusing on the, the rock focusing more. I am not even talking about shadows right now. All I'm talking about is the actual shape of that rock and what it looks like. Ooh, happy, happy clam. Take this. Oh, was that a Bob Ross thing? No, he didn't say clam. He said something else. All right. I gotta let this go. So there's also a chance to go back to it, so that's, that's what I'll do in a minute. So now I'm gonna jump to the opposite side. I'm gonna come over to this other orange one that needs a little bit more detail. I can focus on using strong oranges, little, little bit of contrast, texture, adding water. 
Remember some of the techniques I was teaching you, you're gonna get rid of some of the color and just really use water. I need a little more orange to bump up that color. Again, we're exploring. This is a process of exploring. There's no right, there's no wrong. All right, I'm gonna jump over. I'm gonna go over to my one in the back here. The one in the back does have some gray line. And I don't know if you can see it on TV, but there's some sparklies. Can't draw sparklies. Could probably add some glitter. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but maybe a little bit darker. I'm gonna use the, I love taking my brush and just letting it happen. Get some irregular, irregularity to the rock. And when it dries, it's gonna be lighter. So that's the other thing too. So when you're starting to work with the rocks, if you choose to do. Seashells are awesome too, if you put, take a pile of seashells. And then I'm gonna take and work on this next one. I get my detail brush because I wanna add those brown lines. There's, looks almost like an Easter egg, but there's some real detailed, fine pointed lines. I think rocks are treasures. I love to walk the beach, they're free. You pick them up. They're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you see my mantle. <laughs> what do you got there? Oh, I got a couple rocks. All right, so that has little stripey, stripey, stripey action. Awesome. Very nice. So I'm gonna look at this one here, there's little tiny white speckles or dots. There were a couple things I could do. I could spatter with a um, toothbrush and try to have some white texture or something with, with that. But I'm just gonna kind of go back up over this and try to, oh no, Heidi, take the sponge. There we go, there we go. You, I, I had this planned all along. So I'm gonna take the sponge and add that to add some cool texture. Look at that! All right, so here we go to the scary one. I want a gray. I wanna emphasize that this is round. I'm gonna put those, that gray, pull up with that brush and kinda give it that shape. It's almost like an egg. There are some cracks on it that I can add to it afterwards. Oh wow, how cool is that? So, what I'm gonna do and challenge myself right now is I'm gonna put the background in right now only because of time. And I'm gonna finish this baby up with a, the same kind of a um, yeah, orca. And I mix all my colors so it's a nice consistency of what? Light cream. And I'm gonna go around carefully. Around my seashell, not seashells, my rocks. To create the surface. Look how nice that looks. Could be sand. Now, what other things could you do with this? I could think of a few things. I could add colored pencils to this. I could take and work on top and add more texture if I wanted to. I can we add more shadow if I wanted to? All right, we're getting close to finishing, but I'm thinking about what we just created, what we just, we, 
just did because you're there watching me and going, oh, Heidi, how did you do that? Um, think about what you can find around your house, maybe that you might want to put into an interesting composition. Ooh, I can't stop. Um, and think about some of the things that you can do with this. All right, so is this done? No. Can I do more? Absolutely. Will I do more? Most likely. So we're going to go ahead and come to a wrap with this. Again, it's controlling my brush, moving it around, and working. All right. Fun. Okay, so what do you think? Look at those rocks, look at those rocks. Not a bad job. I think the next step, I think I'll add some shadows. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. This was so much fun. I did a 15, maybe 12 minute demo on how to create rocks. Who paints rocks? I don't know who paints rocks, but it's a great way to explore, right? Rocks around. Try it with eggs, that's another thing. Try like different color eggs, try to do a watercolor based on just that. No one has to see it, it's just for you. You could give it as a gift if you want to. Maybe someone gives you eggs, I don't know. But listen, this has been fun. I hope you're enjoying the series. I know I'm having a blast. And if there's anything you wanna see, or maybe you wanna come in to one of the sessions and work alongside me. That would be awesome if you could come along. All right, so I'm Heidi Hurley. This has been Creating and Exploring. I want to thank BCAM 100%. They do such a great job. This is posted on YouTube. Please make sure you like, comment, follow. I'm always going to be there and having fun. Thanks to the Braintree Community Arts Center, Town of Braintree. This is a great opportunity. I hope you're having fun exploring and creating. Thanks. Mm -hmm.